Okay, so frame's welded. I put the axle back on just with one bolt. And I put the sprocket in the key in, in there with the keyway, so now it turns. And uh, so now it's time to mount up the chain. So here's this. This is just excessively oily. I mean, just lathered in oil. So I put a little brake clean on it to clean that off. So now I'm going to wrap it around that. Well, I, I also took this pulley off. So it's easier for me to get in here. It makes everything a lot easier. Uh, make sure these sprockets are aligned. That's very important, especially for this aluminum, so this, that, so that this doesn't wear. Um, so yeah, I'm going to align them, and then I'm going to loop the chain around all of it, and then right where the chains overlap, because they're going to. This is four feet of chain. I'm going to mark it, and then yeah, well not cut it, but I'm going to punch a pin out and then put another thing on and yeah, uh, I guess I'll show you. So, I punched out this little Johnny right here, that's what holds all these together. There's thousands of them on these, obviously, as you can see. Hold on. Let me untangle it. Okay, so, uh, yeah, there it is. So, this went in here like that, and it held it together. Well, uh, when I pulled this out, I kind of bent it a little bit. As you can see, I bent it inward, and that, like, bearing thing is out of alignment. So, I'm going to try to tap that back in place. And the pains are just a pain to work with, because there's obviously a lot of it and it wants to go where it wants to go so so now the the things are a bit more straight like that so now i'm going to tap this little bearing thing in okay so now how are we going to connect these together i'll show you right here and actually this is another thing to note this is what your split has to look like. It has to be the two smaller ends, okay? So you can't have a small end and a big end, right? So here's what it looks like. You just put this in like that. This is called the master link. And then you're going to pop this thing on. And then you're going to clip this on, which goes right there. And then it should sit kind of like kind of like uh it's kind of hard to show kind of like that you can't see that all right so i'm gonna put that on and i'll uh set that up so you can see all right so now loop this okay nope loop this over that pull it down through a little bit actually we'll go up and over because that's easier so the thing with chains is they stretch Right after you use them for the first time, they are going to stretch a little bit. They just fit right up. Ha! All right. That is like as ideal as it gets. So, I'm gonna put this in here, and this. In there. Ah! So yeah, put the master link together. Come on, there we go. All right, now, this one on, and then this clip. This is the real bugger because it'll fly off and go on the other side of the room. It's wonderful. Now you should be able to put it on. There we go, put it on like that. So I'm gonna stick the screwdriver in here and then twist the screwdriver. Boom, right there. Okay, so that's what you need to do. Put the flathead in there and then twist and it'll get it in there. Okay, so now I have the chain all ready. Uh, it's, it's, it's all tensioned. Once it's on the sprocket, it's all tensioned. I've got plenty of room to slide the engine back to tension it. So chain is good. And uh, this uh, brake system, I just had the caliper on here. It was like mounted right here. It's so tight. It's, it's very hard to fit it back there. Um, but yeah, I had to mill this, <laughs> mill, like hack this out to get it to fit better. So that looks kind of smugly, but that's okay. So um, now I'm gonna take everything off. It, everything is welded. Everything Everything is ready so uh, I'm gonna take everything off um, get these final last grinds down make sure everything is deburred and all that and then I'm gonna take it and uh, start painting
Get ready to see some true artistry going on here. Okay. Well, I didn't film much of it because it's hard to do that with an expensive camera that you don't want to get painty, but frame, painted, done. So now I'm going to punch a hole. Well, actually, I'm not gonna do anything with this yet. Uh, I gotta finish up one thing on the cooler. I'll show you that, hold on. So since the handlebars are gonna be right here, um, the brake line and the brake and the throttle cable are gonna be coming through the cooler, through the insulation part, and then up to the handlebars. So I'm gonna try something that I haven't done before. <sighs> I don't like the way that sits. I'm gonna try something I haven't done before, which is stab a, just a big hole through here and then bring the throttle cable this way and the brake line down this way, because that's where they're going. Okay, time to put the spindle on. Spindle. Okay, it's actually this one. So um, these spindles come with um, plastic spacers right here. I have no reason to believe they won't work. They kind of make me nervous, but you know what? I think they'll be okay. Now here's the thing. This spacer that I put right here, this is so that you don't have to crank down on it for so long because this is all thread, all this. So that means you have to crank down on this for eternity. And since it's a big old nylon nut, that means it's kind of hard to crank. So that's why I put that spacer there. So it's just a 5 8 spacer that you can buy anywhere and then cut it to your perfect size. So... Uh, these little plastic inserts right here, they go inside here. I would recommend keeping them in because they take up the wiggle of the, uh, of the thing. Of the thing. <laughs> okay, um, eh, I don't need to grease it. It'll take away from the white. Okay, that right there. There we go, push that down. And then just start this thread. Don't uh, complete it yet, just get it started. Uh, the way you know that this is the correct spindle is because the uh, hole right here for the tie rod to connect to is facing out because your tie rods are coming from this direction, right? Or unless you built it the other way where the tie rod's right here, but I don't know, some, some guys do that when they're pressed for space, but yeah, that's how you know which side to go with. So don't be flipping this around and stuff because it'll get, confusing if you're dyslexic. Maybe it's just me because I'm dyslexic, but yeah. Other side. There you go. That's threaded on. So now your spindles are on. They're not tightened down yet. Uh, I usually tighten down everything at one time so I don't miss something. So I just put everything on there a little bit, little bit, little bit, and then I go through and final tighten everything with Loctite. So, so that's on. Now I'll do the handlebars. So this is the steering shaft right here and this turns and this turns the tie rod so this is the thing I made <laughs> it's gonna look terrible but yeah so I made this and this presses in here because I painted it it's gonna be a bit harder to get in there but that's okay no one's gonna see it anyway <sighs> Man it as my grandpa would say big wu big wubber oh yeah you guys might fall down I'm watching you Here's the problem I'm having. So this brake caliper is too tight for this rotor. This rotor's too thick. So I think I need to go turn this down on the lathe. Uh, unfortunately, the lathe that I just got is not working yet. So uh, yeah, I have to go to my buddy's shop. So look, I mean, I have to like uh, put a ton of effort on it to get it to turn. So um, yeah, that's gonna suck, but that's okay. All right, so I'm gonna have to take this off 
and then just put everything else on around it. I gotta get this thing done. Chains on. So I'm putting this cover on it since it's gonna be ridden by people I don't know. So I have to cut out the bottom here and they come so you can cut them out. Um, so, let's see. I'm gonna have to cut it some more, I can already see. Okay, the top, just a little bit off the top right here. So I'll do that. All right, both sides need to be cleared. I'll just go a little bit extra, more than I think. I'm using a reciprocating saw. Here, I'll show you. Ooh. One of these things, and it vibrates, so you can just cut it. It's a real clean cut. Painted the tie rods, I'll go grab those and install them. Okay, so I got the brake rotor turned down, I got it thinned down a little bit. So this is the thickest part and I thinned it down a little bit. So now this fits in good. So I'm gonna assemble the rest of the axle. I'm not gonna film it because you've seen it enough times. Okay, so the engine has its bolts going through. Now mind, you might need washers to take up the space because this is supposed to sit on rubber spacers which don't work. The rubber spacers are too soft and they just collapse. So. I wouldn't recommend using those. So um, put the bolt through with some washers and then um, tighten it down, but don't reef it down because this chain is going to stretch, which means that you're gonna have to adjust the engine soon anyway. So um, go ahead and just shimmy your engine into place. Get it looking kind of straight with the chain. Uh, yeah, this way, right there. And then I'll just tighten these down and then I'll let the chain stretch and then I'll move it back and lube your chain. I snapped a chain on my last cooler because I didn't lubricate it, so lube your chains. All right, time to put the cooler on. All right, well, I'm having a heck of a time trying to get the throttle cable and brakes to work. I swear, brake lines, clutches, Throttle cables are the absolute bane of my existence. Let's show you how to do this. Okay, so this is the hub, as you can see, the wheel hub, and the wheels mount onto here. These are like the lug nuts, right? And this big nut right here, this is what's holding this whole thing on. Now, as you can see, this spacer right here is loose, which means this is not tight. So, the reason I put the spacer there is so you don't have to reef this whole thing down all the way, because it's just a pain in the butt. So, uh, you can do whatever you want, but uh, I just put that there for ease of use. Uh, make sure when you make that spacer that there is still, make sure there's still nylon hitting the threads so it doesn't back off. So. I'm, here's what I do. I like to spin it and then tighten it down. Oops, turn it the other way. There we go. It's still loose, so. Yeah, that's it. There we go. So now it's got a little bit of resistance on it. So I'm actually going to back it off about one click. So you can't reef these down, otherwise, it'll just crush the bearings. So I'm going to. I'm okay with that. Now I will put the wheel on. Not tightening these down very much. This is just still mock-up phase. Well, not really, but I don't want to put Loctite on them yet. Because they might need to come back off for adjustment, you know. 
I don't like to torque stuff down until I know that it's all good. So now that's on. All right. <laughs> Heck yeah. Okay, I'm gonna wire up the throttle cable and the kill switch and the brakes. You can look up videos about that and stuff and uh, find out somewhere else. So yeah, I'm gonna do that real quick and then I'll show you it when it's driving. It's looking like my neighbor might actually wanna buy it. So that's pretty funny. We'll see. He might gawk at the price, but they're not cheap to build. So we'll see.